Okay, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, creating a wake, just to, uh, the basics of it. Um, with a pond, we can. Uh, if the idea is first you either create an ocean or a pond, and then you create a wake. Um, the wake is basically a fluid node that has a, a, a an a emission on it. Um, so l let's look at the, the pond example simpler. Um, and uh, so initially, you create a pond. It doesn't really do much. You have to emit into it. You could emit from an object into the pond, uh, or you could emit from a surface. If you pick the pond and you say uh, um, uh, pond create wake, all it does is it creates a little emitter, right? And it emits uh, some density into the pond. Um, now, one of the things about a, a density emitter that, that might be worth showing you here is uh, the, um, here's the emitter here. Uh, it's a volume type, so it's got like a bound on the emission. And one of the problems is you, you, you get like, uh, you can get kind of hard edges towards the edge of the ripple, plus it keeps emitting. Um, that's partly because the drop-off is not, it doesn't go to zero by the edge of this volume. So if we increase the drop-off rate, um, it'll give us a, a smoother profile, you see. And, and you can see there's still a little bit of a harsh edge where it's still uh, clipping a bit at the edge. That means that the density is really not all the way to zero at the edge of that volume. As we increase the drop-off, uh, we'll get even more. And one of the things it also does when, it, when you create the emitter in this fashion is it turns off jitter. If we turn on jitter, you can see it's it's kind of noisy, which is okay when you're emitting into a density value, but when you're emitting into water, the subtle variations of the jitter uh, just create this turbulence. So you, you probably don't want that. So if we just start like that, we don't have any turbulence. Now, the emission also has some other nice features. Um, let me just scale up our emitter here a bit so we can see this a little bit better. So here we'll make our emitter a little bigger, and we'll get a, a big... Now, right now it's emitting kind of constantly upward, so it's like having a, a water pushing up from underneath. Uh, we could, uh, if we want, you can make the density emission negative, so minus 5, and then instead of pushing upward, it'll push down. Um, or, I as a wave, you could make it oscillate. So we could type in, this is one of my favorite expressions in the uh, attribute editors, you can type in expressions uh, by just simply typing equal, and then uh, whatever you want, it, it automatically creates an expression. So we could say the density is equal to uh, the sine. Sine creates like a little oscillating thing about zero uh, of uh, time. And, um, and then we could uh, multiply that by 5 if we want it to go from minus 5 to positive 5. So now we have a little expression, and the, uh, uh, this goes up, and then it'll start to push down. It's kind of slow right now, so we could speed that up. I'll just edit the expression. And uh, we could say take time, and we'll just multiply time by a value, say 10, and that'll make it uh, oscillate. It's as if the time is 10 times faster, so it'll oscillate that much faster. Right? So now we've got like a little wave oscillator there uh, emitting the wake, and it's, it's fairly smooth. Um, and let's just turn this off, so I'll delete that expression, and we'll just go back to the straight emission. Um, and note, there is a little bit of a fallback initially as it drops down, and then it goes into kind of a steady state. Uh, we have turbulence on the emitter, which is, is quite useful uh, for a lot of effects. So um, if you uh, look at the file spring burble, it basically uses this effect. Uh, so we can change the speed of the turbulence, and it's, it's sort of a smooth noise function within this volume. And as you increase the frequency, it'll get more detailed. So if we go 5, uh, 5, 5, you know, then, then you get this very fine turbulence. And it's relative to the size of the emitter. So you can do some, some nice kinds of, uh, uh, of emissions uh, using that. Now, if, if I wanted there to be a little foam uh, emitted as well, um, you need to, when you uh, create the wake, uh, it's, it's at that point you specify foam and then it will uh, set up the fluid so it's handling foam. So when we do that, what it does is our, our fluid now has a temperature grid. 
the temperature grid is used to handle the wake stuff. So we're using, we use the notion of heat emission uh, to handle foam because we don't yet have uh, an actual foam emission under fluid attributes. So we kind of co-opt uh, heat for that. So now when we emit, you can see it's uh, white where our emitter is. And so there'll be, uh, there'll be some foam. And there's, uh, uh, actually the reason why it's slower too is that there's some temperature diffusion on that. It actually speeds up once the, the wake reaches the edge. Um, uh, but then as you move, it'll, the, f the foam in this case, unlike the ocean foam, uh, this foam has memory and you can kind of use this on fluid texture so that when you emit, the foam stays around and then you uh, control how the foam stays on the fluid by the dissipation. So because the foam is temperature on this fluid, um, if you want the foam to dissipate faster, you can go under the contents details uh, temperature and uh, you can use the temperature scale diffusion and stuff. So uh, the diffusion will determine how much it just kind of blends out where it's sort of like a, a blur filter in Photoshop at each time step is the way diffusion works. If we set the diffusion to zero now, if we have dissipation, that's the amount that it fades out over time. So you kind of couple that with how much you're emitting and that determines uh, how much foam there'll be on the surface. And then for shading it, the, the foam um, is uh, on this, it's mapped into the, uh, uh, the, the, the temperature maps into the color. So where it's hotter or where we have more foam, this, the color goes more towards this uh, white color. And then uh, under texturing, um, if we wanted, we could we could texture the color, and if we wanted to texture that sense of foam to um, uh, you know give it a little detail, we could increase the frequency on the uh, the texture. And uh, if you use inflection, you can kind of create things that are sort of uh, ring-like with the the foam. Um, maybe inverting the texture with inflection might might be a little better. Um, so you can get you can get uh, some nice effects, and then you can animate the texture time so that it uh, it varies. Uh, actually, a good one to animate if you use if you animate the texture time, use the space time noise because it'll kind of uh, bubble in place as texture time is animated, and it won't kind of drift to one side or the other. Um, now, foam is a little bit different, I and foam and wakes are a little bit different on the ocean than on the pond. They're actually more complex on the ocean. So let's just uh, create a, an ocean. Um, now, so here's our ocean with a preview plane, and we'll go ahead and uh, ocean create wake, and I'll also, I'll include foam. So if your foam creation is not zero, that it'll, it'll also create a second uh, emitter. So, um, uh, so now we've created the wakes. So now we not only have an emitter, but we have added a fluid. In fact, we've added uh, two fluids. So if I if I scale that one down, you can see we actually have two fluids that are overlapping. One is a wake fluid and one is a foam fluid. And this gives us, by using two fluids, it gives us a little more flexibility. Uh, the, the wake, you know, lets us define the, the bumps, but then the foam lets us use uh, any kind of diffusion model we want, you know, to handle the foam aspect of it. Now these are both now textures on the ocean shader. So they're not just aspects of the fluid the way they are with the pond. Um, one thing to keep in mind, the difference with the pond, the pond is actually just a fluid node uh, itself. It's a fluid shape. Uh, in the case of the ocean, it's a bit more of a complex setup. We have a, a surface with a displacement map and we've got an ocean shader. And then the wakes are added as textures on uh, the ocean. So the wake texture uh, on the ocean is applied as uh, it's mapped under the uh, wave height offset. So the wave height offset is now controlled by the wake, which adds an additional offset value on top of the ocean. And then the foam is the foam offset is what it's mapped into. Uh, now as we run the simulation, you'll see we get this added wake on top of our ocean waves. Now if we want, we can only see if you, if you only want to see the wake effect on the ocean itself and you don't care about the textural sorts of ocean waves, just make the num frequency zero on your ocean and it will also, uh, I it'll generally be quite a bit faster. Um, and you can, you can preview the wake that way. 
Now, if we uh, if we have a, this is a boat, say we could, uh, um, if you had a boat selected when you did create wake, it would automatically kind of size this wake emitter and fit it to your boat so that it would then move with your boat. But we could just uh, do a couple of keyframes here. So I could go down frame one, I could uh, set a key there, and then we can uh, translate this thing, you know, a bit, and uh, set another key. And it's probably moving pretty slowly, but you get get an idea. So as it moves, and let's let's have a little bit more detail on the uh, preview plane, so we can better see what's happening here. Um, so lots of little fine ripples. Now you notice that there's we're getting a lot of chatter and noise on those ripples. Let's go in, and we can make that uh, uh, wake a little smoother. So we'll, I'll select the emitter, and uh, oh, let's just delete. Uh, static channels here so we only have our animated bits okay now the uh, uh, drop off I'll increase which will make it a little bit smoother on the emission um, there we go and then uh, notice the, the ripples are actually fast so if this were like an ocean liner right these waves would be moving too fast and one of the problems when you create wakes unfortunately by default the uh, speed of the waves on the actual ocean, if you've got, if you're showing the ocean waves, is slower relative to the speed on the wake. And it kind of depends on how big the wake is and stuff, how fast the waves are going to be moving. What you want to do generally, because they, they tend to be too fast for like uh, the scale of the ocean, uh, on the, uh, select the um, wake texture and then, and th this is the same on the pond as well, if you want to slow down the wakes so that they don't they don't move outward as fast. If you want to get a nice V-shaped wake, say, and then uh, under simulation, it's um, uh, simulation rate scale. So we'll just make it, say, 0.1, and now the waves will move at a tenth of the speed that they were moving at. So now at this, you know, kind of slow rate of travel, we'll get, we'll get sort of a V-shaped wake. Even that, the waves are moving relatively fast um, you know, we could we could even lower that uh, further, uh, so we get like a, a real sharp V shape on on the wake as our as our object moves. Um, and then it's a matter with the foam. You can, if you want the foam to last longer on it, you can go to the uh, the, the foam texture and adjust the. Um, uh, it's the same thing. It's that the foam texture is uh, using, um, it doesn't have a density grid, but it does have a temperature grid. So we're keeping with the convention of emitting into temperature for emission of foam. And then uh, to, if we have the dissipation less on the foam, and we could turn the diffusion down too if we wanted, then the foam will just sort of be emitted and it will stick around longer. It's still dissipating fairly fast. Well, so I'll turn the dissipation all the way down. Notice the foam is also moving outward. Uh, this is because there is a turbulence on it, and at this rate of speed, that turbulence is kind of high. So I'm going to lower the turbulence speed and the turbulence strength, because uh, it's just a purely, almost a textural effect on the velocity with the turbulence. It just kind of pushes the uh, pushes the foam around with this with this turbulence. Um, we can uh, again lower it, and you can you can set the frequency based on the scale if you're seeing. Um, and uh, generally, you can you, you control it and, and get good turbulence that way on the on the fluid. So that's the basics of of the way that the uh, emitters work. And again, once again, you can pick an object and you can emit into the fluids as well. So you're not limited to just emitting from uh, these standard emitters into these wakes once you've set up the wakes.